So when measuring um, EMFs or electromagnetic frequencies, man-made that is, there are two ma main meters that we use. One is a RF meter, a radio frequency meter for doing the high end like mobile phones and things like that. But for measuring just the 240 volts electricity running through the wires in the house that powers our appliances, uh, we use a gauss meter. So this is a digital gauss meter and this will tell you in your house where there are hot spots, for instance, um, power boxes can throw out very big fields, um, fridges, ele any electric motors, um, wiring in the walls, that sort of thing. So building biologists will use generally a gauss meter and this is a very good digital one, it's very sensitive. Some studies suggest that um, if we spend a lot of time in high magnetic fields there are negative health connotations. For instance, childhood leukemia has been linked to um, magnetic fields of four or five milligauss, breast cancer 10 to 15 milligauss. So this way you can at least know in your home that your bed is in a really high field or your favorite sitting chair isn't in a really a massive magnetic field. So it's a very useful tool to have if you're wanting to minimize exposure to low frequencies in, the, in a home or business. So a gauss meter is incredibly simple to use. Just turn, the, the, turn it on. And generally we'll do it outside to get a base level, just, just to find out what's happening outside the building. And as you can see here, it's actually very low. We're not near any power lines. And we're getting 0 0.13, 0 0.14 or 5 of a milligauss coming up, registering on the meter. That's not a great concern. It's, we're getting a little bit probably from power lines off in the distance, but it's a fairly low level. So now we can move into the house or we can move under some power lines and we'll take a look at what happens to the levels. Generally we want to be, you know, point 0.1 would be ideal um, but anything under one would be, you know, you wouldn't want to be spending a lot of time above one milligauss. So I've now moved to under some power lines. So the thing is the gauss meter is measuring magnetic fields generated by 50 hertz alternating current which is what we use in our power. So alternating current you get the positive and the neutral wires when they get separated, the further apart they are, the larger the magnetic field that gets generated. Um, it can vary enormously um, from house to house, also you know, uh, different power lines if you're near a transformer box, wherever there's a step down or a step up transformer, you're going to get a huge um, increase in the magnetic field. So we'll just have a look. We looked at a more neutral spot away from the power lines, we're getting about 0.13 or 4 of a milligauss. So right now we'll have a look at what we're getting under the power line. So now that we're standing under a power line, you can see there's been about a tenfold increase from before we're at 1.3, 1.4 milligauss. Now that's not incredibly high. I've stood under some power lines and had 10, 15 milligauss. So depending on the, the voltage of the power lines and things like that, whether there's a, there's a transformer box close by, you're going to get a, a huge variation in these readings. But for instance, if you're on a second level apartment and there's power lines running right past your window, that could have a, an enormous impact um, coming, penetrating far into your house, you know, um, at very high levels. So it's, it's just great to be able to see what's happening in your, in, in your environment so you can minimise your exposure and you don't hang out, or spend long periods of time in very high levels of magnetic fields. So we've found a transformer box. So if you've got your house um, or the building in particular close to a transformer box, that can have an impact on um, the magnetic field coming into your house. Luckily, uh, magnetic fields do drop off fairly quickly. Like so, the, you know, they, they drop fairly exponentially the further you move away from them. But it's um, something that's good to measure. The other thing is obviously um, at peak times when people are using lots of power, the magnetic field will go up with the power use, you know, going through the lines. So we looked before at just a regular power line. We were getting, you know, just a one and a half milligauss. Just standing here next, near a transformer, we're getting, you can see, close to five milligauss, if you can read that. And if I come closer to the pole, if I come closer to the pole, Six, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixty milligauss. See this? Obviously, there's this cable coming down here is throwing out a massive field. Sixty-seven, ninety-eight milligauss. So, just to give you an idea, it drops off very quickly. If I move fifty centimeters away, it drops down to ten milligauss. I move a meter away, it drops down to six milligauss. I move a metre and a half or so, five. So you can see it does drop off. 
So magnetic fields, they're very hard to shield from. You can't use lead, concrete, they'll go through virtually anything except something called mu metal, which is not really affordable. So the best thing you can do with magnetic fields is to remove the source or to remove yourself away from the source. So now we're going to take a look at uh, magnetic fields created by AC electrical currents. That's the power running through the walls, 50 hertz power, 240 volts in Australia. You can see now we're on 0.15 0.16, it fluctuates slightly. Milligauss, that's very low. That's sort of really in a zone that you'd be quite happy with, you know, in a living situation. I mean, in nature, it would be pretty much zero because um, these magnetic fields are created by AC current, which don't occur in nature. It's a man-made phenomenon. All right, so one of the common sources that people may not be aware of is your laptop computer. Now, laptops can throw out high frequencies from the wireless side of things, but let's have a look at what a laptop does on the low frequency end of the magnetic field. So right now you can see we've got still got a very low reading, 0 0.1, 0 0.12. But as we move closer to the computer, we're about 50 centimetres away now, 1.8, 0.2, 0 0.3. Still not super high, but if you've got this on your lap, okay, we're going right over to the keyboard. If you, you've got actually... In the case of this computer, 69, 70 milligauss going straight into your reproductive organs. Now, there's been links towards uh, with childhood leukemia at around 4 or 5 milligauss, breast cancer 10 to 15 milligauss. So we're looking at 70 milligauss on your lap. So if kids are, have got laptops and things like that, um, it's not surprising that we're seeing a huge drop in fertility rates and things like that because magnetic fields can actually change or damage sperm and eggs and things like that in women. The other thing is your hands are going to be in this field. So you might notice you get drained if you're working a lot on a laptop. What I do is I use a cordless, or sorry, not a cordless, a wired USB keyboard. We come back here, just not that far away, 0.3. We're in a safe range, very, very low magnetic field. Right, so other sources of uh, magnetic fields um, include electric motors, so things like your blenders, vacuum cleaners, so those backpack vacuum cleaners cleaners use are throw out massive fields and um, could be incredibly detrimental to cleaners' health, especially if they have them on their back all day long. Um, other things just include something like a ceiling fan. So let's have a look I'm, at the reading I'm getting. Um, the light will throw out a little bit, but we're getting a very low reading, about 0.03. 0 0.06 of a milligauss, which is a very low reading. If I turn the fan on, let's see what happens. We're jumping up to 30 milligauss. So that's just by turning the fan on. Now, as I drop away, you can see it's a pretty much an exponential drop off. It's 3, 2, 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.5. I'm still picking it up, you know, half a metre away. 0 0.09. So we're now we're getting down around a metre away. So it just gives you an idea. You can be mindful when you're near electric motors or a fan or something like that. If you just move yourself a metre, a metre and a half away, generally you'll be out of the high magnetic zone. So on the other side of this concrete wall, we've got a fridge. At the moment, the motor's not running. And we've got it so we can sort of check the levels. 0.13 of a milligauss, nothing too big. If we come around, we'll just have a look how thick this wall is. It's a concrete wall. It's probably, you know, 28, almost 30 centimetres thick. It's a very solid wall. Just to show you that magnetic fields are almost unstoppable. Lead won't stop them. Concrete won't stop, stop them. So in other words, if you were to have an armchair here, your favourite armchair here, it was in a living room situation, for instance, or your bed, um, we're going to take a look at what sort of magnetic field you might be exposed to if you're on the other side of a fridge motor. So we'll wait till the fridge motor goes on. Okay, so the fridge motor has just kicked on. And look what's happened to the level. We're getting against the wall. So remember, this is a thick concrete wall. We're getting 17, 16, almost 20 milligauss. So just remembering breast cancer, we're talking 10 to 15 milligauss. Childhood leukemia, 3, 4, 5 milligauss. So if your bed was up against this wall, your head would be sitting in a huge magnetic field any time the fridge motor was on. 
So it's not that difficult to reduce your exposure to magnetic fields, even though they will go through concrete, lead, metal, anything. It's just a matter of getting out of them. You either move the source of the magnetic field or remove yourself. So just by moving up from the wall, we can be up around 20 milligauss and even you know, 30 centimetres away from the wall it's 5, which is still really too high. You wouldn't want to sit in that for a long period of time. At about 50 centimetres it's down to 1.8. So that just gives you an idea of how quickly the magnetic field drops off very, very quickly. So another powerful source of a magnetic field uh, coming in your house would be the power box. Again, it's just wise if it's on a bedroom, for instance, that you don't have your bed too close to it, um, or an office, your chair. So we'll just have a look at the power box. It, the magnetic field varies depending on what's being used in the house at the time. So I'll just go close to this one. And we're up around 26 milligauss. You can get a lot higher than this from power boxes. So, as we move away, at 30 centimetres it's dropped down to 4 milligauss, 50 centimetres, 0.4. So, in the case of this power box right now, if you were to move a metre, a metre and a half away, you'd be out of the danger zone. Now, again, it does fluctuate, so I would probably normally recommend to be at least a couple of metres away. From your power box if you've got a bed or a chair that you sit in for long periods of time. So with any of EMFs the thing is it's the intensity of the field and the length of time you spend in it you want to minimize both of those things. You know obviously you want to use the blender you're going to be in a high magnetic field but it's only for a few seconds. That's where you're going to spend a lot of time if you can reduce the magnetic field both high and low in those areas um, it's just going to stack the, the odds in your favor for remaining healthy.